Ligari Nation, we have an amazing project to show you today. Watch how we turned this to this. It was a railing before that didn't bring any real value to this space, so the homeowners in Ligari brainstormed and this happened. A custom-built concrete breakfast bar. The railing was torn down and a custom breakfast bar was built. Watch how we took this custom bar and coated it using our concrete overlay to make this beautiful piece look like real concrete. Now the homeowners can enjoy a nice meal in this space. If you want to coat your surface to make it look like real concrete, visit Ligari.com to get your products today. All right, guys, what we have here is a massive breakfast bar that we're going to turn in to make it look like a solid slab of concrete using our concrete overlay product. So um, I'll kind of run through the steps that we took to get it to this point to where it's ready to be coated with our overlays. Um, so we, they built it. This actually used to be just kind of a, a railing right here, um, kind of pointless. Um, and so they had a cool idea to turn it into a big old breakfast bar where they can eat. They got the TV on the wall there. So really cool idea. So they had it built, sheeted it with MDF, and then what we did is we came in, bondoed all the seams, in it, and we usually just bondo the seams. We wanted to try doing the fiber tape like they do on uh, drywall, just to uh, minimize any issues down the road of it cracking, because you never know with wood, um, if you sit on it or something. So. By doing this, it just makes it that much more durable and less prone to cracking in the future. Um, so we did it, it worked awesome. So we highly recommend that for bigger projects like this. Um, so yeah, we put the fiber tape on, put the bondo over that, and then we sanded everything. We filled all the screw holes that held this thing in, routed all the edges. Always wanna router your edges, make sure you're going over rounded corners. So this thing's pretty much ready to go. We plastic the floor off, um, and we're even gonna coat underneath here. Even every, every seam, inside edge, we did that fiber tape. It worked really awesome, and now we don't have to worry about any of these seams cracking over time. Um, it just makes it that much more durable. So these are ready to go. That's pretty much it. Just sheet it, fiber tape it, Bondo everything. And now when you guys are using Bondo, Bondo does have a pretty potent smell, so just keep that in mind. Um, it's gonna it's gonna make your house smell like Bondo. So get some windows open, try to get some airflow. Um, just just remember that. Um, and then we'll show you the process to turn this from wood and to make it look like a solid slab of concrete. All right, so our primer's ready. You can see it's gone clear, and it's actually really sticky. So we want to go over it when it's sticky. We don't want to wait longer than one and a half, two hours of applying that to apply the overlay. So if you wait longer than that, this will just become a sealed surface. So we don't want that to happen. Make sure if you're priming um, that you're able to coat the overlay over it within that one and a half, two hour window um, and you'll get a good bond between it. So what we got, mixed up our overlay and for vertical faces, we just dip out of the bucket with a three eighths snap roller. We roll it on and then we flatten it off with our squeegee. Um, and that's kind of the process the top, we just dump it out, squeegee it around. So any vertical faces, you can roll it on, flatten it off. So a lot of guys will do that when they're coating walls. We've had guys coat walls with this product, um, floors, counters, bars, uh, just pretty much anything, pretty much coat anything. Um, it's really cool that you can go vertical. Um, we've had guys do you know, 10, 12 foot tall walls and just make them look like concrete. We have a few videos of us doing that as well. So very versatile product. But yeah, we're gonna get right to this and kind of show you the process. I'll probably, Tim will roll it on there for me. I'll flatten it off and we'll start underneath here, get all this done, because this will take the most time. And then we'll just pour a big bead out here, get the top done, start running it over that edge. And then same thing, dip and roll over there where it's needed. Um, and we'll get that first coat on. So it's that simple guys, you wanna put it on thick and then I can spread it around, flatten it off with the squeegee. And then we have a piece of cardboard down there to catch a lot of those drips instead of mucking out all the plastic because we are gonna be doing another do coat.
So this is kind of what we're after. Um, we just want to kind of flatten it all off. Now it has crushed marble in it. So that's why it's letting it, it's putting it all on at the same thickness and we're not like scratching down to the wood. Now all these scratch marks are fine. You're going to get that on your first coat because we're going over a, a, a basically a sealed flat surface. Our next coat is going to hide all of that. So I'm just making sure I don't have any drips, runs, thick spots. And you just kind of do a section, come back and look. But this is what we're looking for. Just a nice even coat everywhere. Nothing's too thick. And then always try to pull out any thick spots on your bottom edge. That way you don't have to cut that out later. And that's all we're doing. Just making sure it's all flat and coated. All right, so we're done on this. We can wash our tools off with just water. Um, this will wash off easy with water. If it, if it sets up on a little bit, you might have to use your hands to kind of rub it off. So we'll go wash that tool off. And then this can take anywhere from, from an hour to two hours to set up enough to do your next coat. Um, depending on temperature, obviously the hotter it is, the faster it's gonna dry, the colder it is, the longer it's gonna take. Um, and you can also put a fan on this to speed up that process as well. So 
You can do multiple coats in one day, um, but we're probably just gonna let this sit, come back tomorrow, clean anything off that we need to do, any spots we missed, any imperfections, we'll go over that tomorrow, and then we'll show you how to do your second coat. All right, guys, before we start our next uh, step, I wanna show you how durable this product is um, by doing a drop test using a coffee mug. Now, we just have one coat on here. This is gonna get a few more coats, so, so this is very impressive how well this bonds. Um, and then obviously only one coat, very, very cool. So our, our primers are amazing. They bond to everything. And, and this is over MDF um, wood. So we'll start out with maybe, maybe right here. And I'm gonna try to drop it on the corner. That's gonna be the hardest point. No, it's fine. It didn't even break. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go really high here. So we drop pretty much in this vicinity. No chips, no delamination, nothing. Um, so rowdy product. All right, so before we apply the, the next coat, we wanna just run a scraper over it. It's gonna knock all the peaks off of that crushed marble that's kind of sticking up um, and just kind of get any imperfections that we can find out before we apply that next coat. And it's very, very fast. All right, so we can get the, the next step mixed up and then we'll show you guys how to apply that second coat. So Tim's getting ready to mix the products and what, what I like to do is prehydrate your surface because what happens is we just laid this down. Now it's a porous surface, it's a cementous based surface. So it's gonna soak up any moisture that's applied on this and our overlay products have polymers, water, stuff like that in it. And it's gonna wind up soaking all of that out of that next coat if we don't hydrate and satisfy this surface from pulling the moisture out of the next coat. Um, if you don't hydrate, you're gonna put that coat down and it's gonna suck that out immediately. You're not gonna have as much working time. It's gonna be harder to work, harder to trial out. So always prehydrate. And then as we're coating, if we need to spray more or it's drying out, we'll spray more as we're coating as well. Just using a simple A sprayer, we like those. They spray the best. And just spraying with water. So you can see how much water we've sprayed on this and it's just soaking it right up. So we got the product mixed up, we're ready to go. The surface is, is pre-hydrated, right? We got the sprayed with water, so we're gonna have plenty of working time. It's not gonna make this material thick. Um, and like I said before, if it starts to dry out, we'll just hydrate as we go. We just wanna make sure there's no standing water. We don't want standing water or puddles. If you have those, wipe those up with a rag and then go over that. Because if you go over a puddle or a thick spot of water, it's going to thin the material out and it can kind of turn white right there. Um, the next thing is, as we're traveling this out, when, when I'm finished with the section, I'm going to go back and do random strokes in different directions because we want this to look random. We don't want to have, say, a random pattern here and then I, I come through and I have a straight line. It's going to show that, that line. So we want to make sure we're going random when we finish it off and I'll kind of explain that as I do that. But we're gonna apply it the same exact way as before. Um, that's the only different thing we're doing is hydrating and we're, we're finishing off with a, with a random pattern of the trowel. So we want to do that, that way everything's uniform. We don't have any straight edges or anything. Um, so we'll just, that's kind of the process. We'll just keep moving down and just make sure you're always doing that random texture after the second coat.
So guys, try to save everything you can. That's why we're kind of picking stuff up. We're sliding it back on the cardboard. That way you don't run out of your product. Um, and then obviously hydrate as you go. You can see some spots drying out. It ain't, ain't, ain't a big deal, but Tim already sprayed the back wall for us. So just hydrate as you're going. And then remember to just do that random texture after you flatten everything off on that second coat. So scratch coat time, we've already hydrated. Um, and, and on this coat, I like to pre-hydrate a couple times. That way this, this whole, um, the first two coats are kind of satisfied, right? So we don't have to hydrate as much and it just makes it kind of soaking good. It's, it's not gonna um, suck material moisture out of our scratch coat. So I always like to pre-hydrate like half an hour before we start, spray it down, let it soak in, spray it down again, let it soak in. That's gonna make this coat go a lot easier. Um, we're gonna apply it the same way. He's, Tim's gonna roll it on, and then instead of the squeegee, we're using a rigid uh, like putty knife, large putty knives, and we're just scraping it as tight as we can get it, and it's gonna fill in all these low spots, and that's what creates a smooth surface for us. So this doesn't have any crushed marble in it. It's like a paste, um, and you, you'll kind of see the process as we get going. But again, the biggest, the biggest key is hydration, pre-hydrating before, and if we have dry spots, we'll add more water as we're going along. Last thing I want to hit on is we took the plastic off and the tape and we re-taped everything because we don't want to do our finish, pull, pull the tape after we're completely done coating because if we have a spot that needs to be repaired, we can repair that with this coat by putting it on a little thicker. I'll actually show you a spot here. We have some holes. So we got a little hole under here and we can fill that with this coat hole here. So there's just imperfections we can find and then also, when we pull the tape and we're all done, this tape will pull a lot easier because there's not so many coats stuck to that tape edge.
So as I'm as we're coating, I'm not worried about flattening off every edge. It's actually nice to leave a little product there and we can mold that in after about 10, 15 minutes. And if you wait too long and it gets too hard, you can sand that down. So it's a, just a lot faster if we come back here in a little bit, rub these edges in, they always look nicer. They're more rounded and they fill the corners better as well. And I'll, we'll show you that when we get to that point. So we'll finish the top and then we'll start over here and show you how to rub those edges in. All right guys, so rubbing in your corners, we just wanna hit them at the right time. We can just kind of feather those in, round them, and they'll look like they were actually poured in a form. And if it's too wet, it'll just move really easy. We want it to kind of set up a little. You can also rub in like scratch marks or any imperfections, you can also rub those out as well. Obviously if it's too wet, it'll just kind of smear around, but we got a bunch of little chunks here. But it's good to have a few imperfections because all four concrete has imperfections in it. We're just looking for the main ones that catch your eye. So before we show you guys staining, um, they want these counters darker, so we are gonna stain them. If you guys want that natural gray, you would simply do the urethane right over this. But again, we're staining, so we'll go over that step next. But before you do that, um, you can always take sandpaper, sand out any imperfections, get your corners nice and round. You just wanna be real careful on your corners. Sand them with 220 grit, sand them by hand. Don't palm sand your, your edges, because you'll wind up sanding through especially on, on peaks on your corners like this, be real careful. So we've already went around, sanded it. It's real simple, 220 grit, right? You can just kind of fine tune everything. But again, you wanna be real careful and then you wanna clean it um, really good when you're done. Let it dry out and then seal. You never wanna seal it, apply the urethane top coat over a wet surface. So we'll let this dry out. We'll show you guys the staining process next. And if you guys have chunks, chunky spots, thick spots, you can do like 80 grit, 120 sand those down and then finish them off with a 220 so you don't have like big scratch marks in it from that rough sandpaper. 
All right, so stain time. We have our Ligari stain black. It's already mixed up, ready to go. Now, if you guys are wanting that natural concrete look, you would just do our urethane top coat over this and it would be that natural gray color. They want it a little darker, so we're gonna rub our uh, black stain on um, because it is tough to not get drips and runs when you're staining such a, a tall vertical surface. So we're gonna rub it in. Just keep in mind when you guys are doing our lighter stain colors, even our, our dark gray, you can't really rub that in. The stain will just wipe off. Um, so if you wanted it like a lighter gray, you could mist this with water and then rub the black in and kind of wipe it off as you go to get a lighter gray. Um, like I said, the light stain colors, they really need to be sprayed on to stain that light color. Um, so you couldn't really do this process with it. But to get that darker gray, you would just mist the surface. That way it doesn't soak up the stain right away. And a lot of that black can, can come off after you wipe it. Um, but they want the, a darker gray, so we're just gonna stain it dry. I'm gonna dip it, wring it out, and we're just gonna start rubbing it in. It's really fast and simple, and I'll probably have a couple other people jump in here just so we can get this done quick. So I'll just start, soak this rag, and then kind of wring it out. And then we're just rubbing it in. You can see it makes it, gives it just a really cool contrast. Notice too guys, I'm doing circle motions. That's always good when you're staining. And I'm just kind of feathering it back into the dry spots. So when you guys are staining, if you have drips, try to wipe, wipe those in right away. If it dries on you, you can kind of just rub those in really hard to feather them out. But try to minimize like getting drips and letting it dry and soak in. So when we're, if we get drips on the wall, we'll just rub those spots in real quick. So I got a, a drip here. I'm gonna let that dry in and kind of show you guys how to. So all I'm doing now is just kind of rubbing in any spots that kind of had a lighter tone to them. That way this is not splotchy at all. Got a little stain action going on under the breakfast bar. Let's see how it adds so much depth to the, the concrete. A lot of variation in color. So like I did on that front edge, when you guys are done, if you have any marks, like we can see kind of like a, a hard edge here from that first stain. So look at that kind of curved area. Obviously it's gonna look good even if you sealed it like that, but if you wanna kind of feather those out, just take your rag when it's dry and just start kind of hitting those spots. And this will kind of even everything out. You just wanna make sure your rag's pretty dry so you're not staining, putting a lot more stain on there. And notice too guys, I'm always doing circle motions. We never wanna just go back and forth. It'll kinda of leave, leave drag marks in there. So just always circle motions and you'll be able to feather any imperfections out. <laughs> 